What's up guys? Today I'm going to be ranking every critical hit in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Um, so my name is Ensbeater. If you like any content in here, please like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you never miss one of my videos. Um, I have a lot of school, unfortunately, so I do have to work on that, obviously. And I haven't been able to make a lot of videos. I'm going to do my best to make my to make more videos. School lets out in like three weeks, maybe. I should be able to make a few videos then, but I do have camp, unfortunately. So, hopefully I'll be able to get a bunch of videos in before camp, and I can like set them to post maybe once a week. And I'll do what I can. So, anyway, let's get into it. Before we get into this, I'm going to quickly say this is a ranking purely based on what it looks like and how I like the critical hit hit as a, as a whole, not a power ranking. So one of the like strongest hits in the game could be pretty low if it doesn't look that good. So for our first one, we have Kazuya's, mainly based on the fact that it is very hard to hit, and it's Kazuya's forward smash, where you have to hit just the tip of the the punch right at the end for it to actually crit otherwise if you're too if you're too close then you'll only just hit him so this is a bit too hard to hit and since it's a smash attack it means it's gonna have delay so it's easy to dodge too unless they're just not moving like in this case which will usually not happen so, especially in a competitive match, it's really hard to actually land, and it might even not land at all throughout the entire game. So, this takes 32 for just being too hard, and it doesn't really look, it looks good, like every critical hit, but it doesn't look the strongest compared to some others later on. So, this is 31. I thought, I meant 32 just now, um, but I didn't have time to retake that. Because there is noise upstairs and I want to try to finish this as quick as possible. So any video that has slight mistakes like that I'm not going to retake. Because I want to try to get this out today, Sunday. And if I have to retake some I might not be able to since I need like 32 clips. But for my second one we have Little Max Smash it Attacks and Tilts if they are countered. So if I make him, say, side smash, and then I do my side smash or tilt as he does his, like, hey, this is hard to land, but it's like right as he hits his, before I get launched, since I don't really have, like, super armor or anything, it does start the KO. But as you can see, even if they're not, even if, like, they're controlled, it's still like really hard to hit. Maybe should I like stay back? Yeah, I have no idea how to hit this. All I know is that if you counter using a smash attack that's what triggers it. It's basically impossible to land though. So this takes 31. It is a bit more hype if you land it, for, that's for sure. So that's why it, that's why it does do better than Kazuya's. But if any, there it is. But if anything, it's harder. It's one of the hardest ones to land, if anything. So this takes 31. All right, I got a second controller so I could have someone controlling both of them. Um, so the red one might get Jif, just so you know, but this is Marth and Lucina's neutral special. This is both of them together. I'm gonna count them as one, so this is just 30, not 29. But it's the neutral special if it breaks a shield. Like that. 
but it, it doesn't look the best. It's just a shield break, which a lot of attacks do, so I don't even know why they just gave it to this one. I don't play Fire Emblem, so it could just be a reference to that. Um, but yeah, this one is also hard to hit. They're, if you're shielding and you they start doing this, you're gonna know that you should dodge. And it doesn't even do a lot of damage either, since it breaks the shield. It doesn't act. I don't even know if it does any damage. Yeah, it doesn't even do damage since it's a shield break. I mean, I guess you could do another one. But even that doesn't do, like, the most damage either. So it's better to just have him alive. Oh, right, he was, he was controlled. But yeah, for this one also being very hard to hit, it, this takes 30. And Lucina's so it's the same thing. Alright, next on our list of too hard to hit and doesn't look good, we have Krom's Neutral Special. You have to charge this up for way too long, so this is one of the longest charges in the game if you want full if you want the full hit. Yes, it does 60 damage, but as I said, this isn't a power ranking. If anything, I'll just mention the power quickly. So while this does a lot, not only is it extremely hard to hit, but it doesn't look too good either, considering it's just a sword strike. Later on, Rui, which is covered with fire, does look much better. So Rui is going to be a, a bit higher on this list. But Krom's just isn't. In my opinion, Krom's just doesn't really look the best. So he will get number 29. Next up we have Lucas. Again, this is not going to be with Ness, even though it sounds like it should be. They do have different critical hits, so Ness is also a lot higher than this. But it's the up special if you hit it yourself and knock yourself into the opponent. I'm going to move the camera a bit. So you can see, not only, the critical hit is only at the end, that's the, my problem with it. So while it does look good, it just has all these hits that are normal, and then ends with a critical hit, which is kind of weird in my opinion. Kind of weird look. So, yeah. So, that's gonna take number 28. Alright, so, Lucario's... Um, side special kind of looks like a forward throw just so you know this is what it looks like um, for reference though this is his actual forward throw right here so I guess they do look somewhat different um, but if you have full aura as a Corio, you get to do this for side special which is what we're talking about right now because it, yes, it looks good after the grab, but the fact that you grab first just kind of lowers the hype a bit. Not really the hype, but it doesn't look as good if you um, grab first and then throw them. It may have been a bit better if it like was just like the giant push of Aura. But as for now, not my favorite. And you have to be really close to him to actually grab. If you're, like, right here, it'll just hit him, which won't activate the crit. So, this is going to take number 27. The two players, we have Mr. Game & Watch with his, you might think, a side special. Side special will be later on, but this is his down special. Which, so you can see he can fire that. The down special can reflect that, so it's sort of like a counter. It can also take, like, some things and basically collect them, I guess. I don't really know how to describe it. But, can it damage them? No, it can't, it can't damage them. So this is mostly purely a counter. However, I don't have enough hands. 
or I'll set him to do side smash. If you use it with something like this, it won't counter, so it's mainly just a reflector. But some stronger projectiles you'll actually keep instead of countering. Um, apparently, this is not one of them, so I might need to switch to someone else. Okay. So let me switch to Mario. This one works. So I'm going to have Mario using his neutral special. He's shooting the fire. And if you use down B on a strong one like this, you can actually take the fireball. And once you get all three, you can just pour it out. So this is good. And the ending part does look good. The problem is, A, Game & Watch is a really good character to begin with. Um, so it doesn't look... Because of, like... Since they decided to use Game & Watch graphics for him, that means it doesn't look as good as it could be, since he is in 2D. It still looks good for him, but compared to everyone else, theirs is a lot better. And the fact that you need to take three projectiles, or two projectiles, and then take another one without your opponent noticing that if they fire projectiles, you're going to take them. So most of the time they'll just stop using projectiles as long as they're someone that doesn't have any. And if you are fighting against someone that doesn't have any, you can't use it at all during the battle. Since you saw what happened when I used smash attacks. So it's a good attack, but one that sometimes is impossible to hit. So that put it down a lot and that brought it to 26. Having to the same character, we have King Dedede's Hammer. Again, this does not go with Kirby. Kirby's looks a bit better, and he'll be a bit higher on the list. But, plus it's a, I forgot it was a down special for um, King D.E.D., which is A, weird, because it's hitting from the side, and B, confusing, since Kirby's is a side special. I guess this works more like as a side special, though. But yeah, basically, you charge up this fire. Eventually, it starts hurting you, and that's when you know to let it go. So, usually the only character that can get hurt from their own attacks is Pichu. And, I guess, Jigglypuff um, with hit, with her um, shield break, since it basically kills her automatically. But, yeah, this takes too long to control. You can move, barely move during it. They, it's very easy to run from. If you're charging it for too long, it'll hurt you. And yes, it does look good when it gets hit, like every other critical hit, but since every critical hit looks good, I have to use other factors to figure out what's good and what's not. It would be cool if, like, when you killed, it launched them, like, actually, it actually launched them, like, towards the back. That would have definitely given this some points, but for now, it's going to be here at number 25. And you can't even charge into a wall because you just go below the wall. Or floor, I mean. For number 24, we have heroes, any smash attack, really. Because each one has a 1 in 8 chance of critical hitting. I can't even land the up smash. But since it's smash attacks, that means it, they're easy to dodge, just like Kazuya's. I do like Hero, like, I do like the Hero's complexity, even though she's a sword, or he's a sword fighter. So, the fact that it's, like, a 1 in 8 chance and not definite does go with the complexity. Um, so that brings it up a bit, which is why it's much higher than Kazuya's. But, it, it's really hard to hit. Harder than Kazuya's, and so if Kazuya's, you know if it's gonna land or not. At the same time, there's no like rage pro range problems with heroes, um, so that also brings it up a bit since you can hit it from anywhere. But yeah, you can see I'm not landing it at all. So, since I basically can't land it right now. This one will just have to go in 24. Okay, one more, then I'm ending the video. Like, there it is.
good timing. But yeah, that that was it. As you can see, it took forever to land it. So if you want people to think you're spamming um, smash attacks, then you can use that. But yeah, if you don't want to spam, you really can't use this stuff. We have Cloud's Limit Break. All of, well, one of them doesn't critical hit, but the other three are all going to be on this list. First, we have his up special, which is good for recovery. I'll tell you that. Which is, it's one of the, like, it's an amazing recovery for Cloud. But the actual critical hit is if you hit someone, which is that. It looks good. It goes a bit down by the fact that you hit it him again after the first hit. So you finish it with a regular hit. And if it's multi-hits, I don't really like it at all when it's a critical hit. Because then you just have hits that aren't criticals and then it either just goes into a critical or it's a critical and then it just ends with something normal like that. And of course it's hard to, it's not the hardest to land since they can be like above you. But even that's hard to land. If you forward throw, they're going to go a bit to the right. Obviously you need your limit so you can't really try this a bunch at once like you could for basically every other character. It doesn't even critical if you hit them above ground. Just like the Ouija's down taunt. Um, you would have to hit, or not down taunt, up, up special I mean. Which is on this list. Um, you can, you have to land it perfectly on the ground. If you're in the air it won't actually work. You can use, hit B to go back down. But they're going to be too high up for that. So that's useless. So yeah. This is not the best. Some look good, so this takes number 23. Next, we have the Lee Brawler's Kick, which is his neutral special, which is that. So this is similar to Falcon Punch and Warlock Punch, but now it's a kick, which is, I think, just Flaming Kick, I think. Um, I don't remember the name for sure. I know it's number three, so if you want to equip this, the neutral special um, would be the third one. And this is good. I like this one. We're get, we're starting to get into some of the ones that I actually like. Well, I like them all, but these I really like. The problem is um, Captain Falcon and Ganondorf just do this much better. And I don't want to put like three of the same thing all together. So for basically being a copy of them, even though there's already like, I mean, Falcon, Captain Falcon already has Ganondorf as a basically full, full copy. So we didn't need another copy of him. So this does go down a bunch for that. And while still good, it takes number 22. Right, speaking of which, we have Warlock Punch now as Ganondorf's neutral special. So this can critical hit if you hit it normally. It can critical hit if you turn around during it. It can critical hit if you're falling and you turn around. So obviously the best like way to do it is to do it in midair after turning around. That does the most damage. But that's really hard to land. As well as actual Warlock Punch, which is why it's down here. Captain Falcons is just more iconic, easier to hit, and just better because he's also faster so for that um, warlock punch is gonna have to take number 21 this is really hard to hit but looks it looks like really good oops oh, dang it all right so now i'm getting drift here we go all right so this is incineroar's revenge with the side special which I can barely do with two hands. There. So you get revenge. Then you have to time it perfectly. Or And if you're too early, I won't even land. And then you have to get revenge again. So this is one that takes forever to get, is way too hard to get. Usually if you, like, it's just really hard to land it there. So that's the critical hit. That took like 10 minutes to get. Most matches aren't 10 minutes long. 
And yeah, this one's just way too hard to land. It does look really good, especially with the boxing ring attack. So this is going to take number 20. So be a bike, and yes, I am doing the chat alt for both of them, because I'm not a monster. But this is his neutral special, which you have to charge up for a really long time. It does look a, bit, a lot better than Krom's does, but it's also less iconic. Um, Krom and Roy both have more iconic ones than he does, especially since they do more damage. And he kind of looks weird while charging this. He's just, like, standing in a roadway, I guess, I don't know. Um, but yeah, this one, it's easier to hit because it has, like, flaming pillars kind of charge up. So it's a bit easier to land than Roy and Krom's. But it's also one of the harder ones, especially since you can't turn around like they can. So once you start charging, you're stuck like that. And it's good for edge guarding because the f pillars can go forward over an edge. But yeah, this is just way too hard to hit and takes way too long to charge. So this, for not being too good, it's still somewhat good, but this is going to have to take 19. All right. like So now we have Kirby's side special, which looks a bit better because it's fire. Um, you can turn it if you need to. I... And I just like Kirby more, like basically everyone else. Um, it's still not that good because it does still damage you. And as you you don't move very fast, it's easy to dodge. But, I mean, I just... It's basically the same as DDDs, but I just really like Kirby a lot more. Like, So, yeah, Kirby takes this one. And... It would have been cool if Kirby got a unique cap or if he swallowed another Kirby. I mean, I guess technically he does. He just gets the Kirby's bald head. I don't know. Alright, next up we have the one I'm not going to even be able to show you for a little while. Which, hopefully I'll be able to show you um, at the end of this. But it's Wario's Weft, which finishes off the first half of this video. Since this is number 17. So the rest are numbers 1 to 16. But, yeah, so hopefully this charges up. But Wario's Waft is, again, like, way too hard to actually land. It takes forever. In an actual match, you're never going to notice when you have it charged up. And if you're playing as the Plumber Wario, like I've decided to for some reason, it's even worse. Because at least you can, like, see the belly of the Biker Wario um, and use the belly to your advantage since it grows a bit um, as you play. And I wonder if it, like, goes up more if I attack. It may help. I don't know. Um, no, it doesn't. I don't think it does. But, yeah, so eventually it just gets bigger and bigger. Eventually you can do it, but... In a competitive match, when you're moving around a lot, you're never going to notice what, um, that you can see your belly. Unless you, like, really look carefully. I think I heard that chomp chomping. I'm going to actually, like, lower the seconds um, that it takes to use your waft. So I'm going to try doing that. Since the more you eat, the bigger chance that you'll have to fart, I guess. I don't know. Um, yeah. right, hopefully that's good. But I'm going to try using it. Yeah. So that took forever. And, yes, yeah, so this is just way too hard to land. It takes forever to charge. You're never going to notice that it's charged. Which is actually kind of a serious problem. Not really a serious problem, but it's a big problem that, like, they should have, like, I don't know, some sort of meter at the bottom, like, with Cloud's Limit, so you can see how charged it is. But, yeah, this is just way too hard to land. Alright, back to Little Mac. We have the KO Punch. And...
The problem with this one is that you're usually gonna die before this actually would land, would like start. Like I would have just died since this is the wall right here for Final Destination, which most people, most, most competitive people would play on. But usually you'll die before you get your KO punch and if you're lucky enough to land, to get it, it's still really hard to land. It doesn't look the best either, which is a serious problem, obviously. Um, but yeah, so too hard to land. If you miss, you basically have to lose a stock to actually get it back, unless like the other person does nothing but like uses jabs on you, so you end up getting it. But this is extremely hard to get. All right, next we have Heroes Down Taunt or Down Special which has four that I'm going to talk about, which is Hatchet Man, um, Metal Whack, or Metal something. Um, and then we have Whack and Thwack. So we have Hatchet Man, which is extremely strong. Here, Metal Slash, which only activates if they're metal. So that's... But it does, I think it insta-kills them. Alright, let me get Metal Slash. Here, so Metal Slash, they're gonna become Metal. I use it, it insta-kills them. Most people, um, so you would have to both be heroes so they can use, the only way to get metal without using the power up, since no one really uses items, is if the other hero uses Hocus Pocus, which is already a low chance, and then is lucky enough to actually get, um, metal. So this is very hard to, this is, like, also one of the hardest ones to get which lowers it a bit, but since I am counting them um, together, I'm also going to include Whack. Oh, wait, no, that's what I mean. But for Whack and Thwack, both of them basically insta-kill if they're at high enough percents, which if they're at 99, or if they're not at 999, they should be um, killed with one. Here, Whack. So Whack, like, travels in a straight line, but is slow. Whack has a bit more range in front of you, and is, like, a bit fast. I just got it. And is a bit faster. Um, I think I got it, like, twice and passed it both times. Yes, I want Black. Black looks a bit better, and the fact that there are four of them does make it a bit easier to get, since I think there's like a one in five chance that you get one of them. Surprisingly, surprisingly, Kamikaze and um, and Magic Burst don't actually. There we go. They don't actually do critical hits, but yeah, since there are four of them, this does move it up a bit. So this is going to take number 15. The, the next one, which is number 14, is the up tilt for Ganondorf. Which will, it will like make them go like towards you. So like, even if they're... If they're like walking away from you and you, you up, up to, if they're like walking away from you and you use it, they will go towards you. Oh, this is making him avoid me. But yeah, like it's easy to dodge. You know it's happening. If you're too far, even if you get hit, if you're too far away, it won't actually hit you. So. This looks good, and since it's on Ganondorf, that gives it points, because Ganondorf's one of the strongest characters anyway. But yeah, this is a bit hard to hit, 
And since it is a tilt, it doesn't really feel right having it have a charge up since tilts are meant to be quick like this. Um, so since it's a tilt, that does lower it a bit, but still doesn't lower it too much. And still in the top 15, that's pretty good. And I guess top half, still good though. Um, so this is going to take number 14. For our next limit attack, we have his side special, which again is one that has a lot of hits and ends with a crit, which I, as I said, I don't really like. This one is a bit better, um, not a lot, but it is a bit better um, with the fact that like the sword strikes kind of stay, so it looks like all four of them are kind of hitting him at once. And you can see the sword, sword strikes in the background during the actual crit. So that makes it a bit better. And if I... Do this, you can see, so all of them are in the background, which does make this look better. But still not fully the best. It does look cool. The design like in the background while you get hit looks cool. But again, this is actually pretty good. We're getting to like some really good ones. But this is going to take number 13. Next down special has positives and negatives. The negatives obviously it takes a while to charge up. You're vulnerable once it actually hits, but it does look somewhat good if you land it. The problem is even if you land it, you're still like stuck in the ground for a bit, so you can't really f follow up with anything, even if they don't get launched too far, but I think they definitely get launched somewhat far. So like they get launched that, you, if I had time to run, I might be able to edge guard, um, but since it gets like stuck in the ground um i can't you can charge it up in midair so that's good um and you can like do it in midair without it actually getting you stuck to the ground however that just puts you in free fall so that's not a good idea unless you're overground but yeah this isn't really good um, when you consider how long it takes to charge up. So this is, since it's somewhat good, it's taking number 12. All about 15 spots higher, we have Nesses. Which, in my opinion, is a bit better, since it's like one hit. Um, so yeah, this looks a lot better than Lucas's, since it's like just one hit and that's it. There's not too much charge up, and you can easily like hit your opponent if you're far away enough. You can just like hit your opponent too. So if they're coming close, you can just hit, just turn and hit them instead. Um, so like Lucas, this is easy. It's good in terms of like um, charge up. So that's what moves it up a bit. Um, but again, it is still hard to hit like basically every other critical hit and no one really likes pk attacks anyway or ness so giving him a critical hit can be considered annoying but it's not too bad but this is gonna have to take number 11. Okay. sorry about that um yeah this is gonna have to take number 11. next we have kazuya's range which now this one's really hard to land because it can only be used once per stock even if you heal yourself below 100 and get over 100 again but it's basically your down special like that which apparently it's not zooming in right now um i don't think it can zoom in on training maybe but it would usually zoom in but yeah you can see i'm not getting rage back 
that's the other thing. Once you use it, you lose rage, which does have other abilities that now you can't use. But yeah, this is really cool, especially since you like you turn into your dragon form while using it. You basically jump up and push them into the ground. So this is one of the coolest ones. So this put gets into number ten. All right, next up we have Steve with his TNT. Also, the when he's mining, the crack on the ground just kind of looks weird with the um like training stage, but. I don't know, that might just be me. But, um, so this is his TNT. I like the idea of how you can, like, place redstone and then a pressure plate and then use the pressure plate to explode it. Um, TNT is one of the best moves to have a critical hit since, um, it's, like, one of the deadliest moves in Minecraft. You can, you don't even need to use redstone. They can hurt you, that is the only problem. So it is risky, it's more risky than everything else, because everything else, like, they just might hit you with, like, a smash attack or something, but this, I mean, you basically get hit yourself with a critical hit. It won't critical if you hit yourself, though, um, so it doesn't do as much damage than if you hit other people. You can drop it, um, you're kind of stuck then, you can't, like, fishing rod it or anything. Oh, can critical yourself, I you can critical yourself then. Um, but yeah, the range, the range isn't good. It takes forever to actually place it. You have to have redstone to place it too. So that means you have to mine. And in competitive play, not only are people like saying that Steve should be banned, but you're never going to get a chance to mine for that long. Anyway, so yeah. So pretty good. I like how it relates to Minecraft itself, um, but this isn't the best, so this will take number nine. All right, for the final um, cloud critical hit, we have his down special with the limit, which is one of the best. It doesn't do too much damage. It basically does nothing um, in terms of damage. Okay, so right now, right now he's at ten point eight. Now he's at 12. So it does 1.2 damage. So that's not good at all. But it does some of the best... Um, it does some of the best knockback. Especially if they're high. Like, if you do damage them first... Then this can do, a, like, a ton of knockback. Especially if you have limit first, because then you can do even more damage, I think. Yeah, you can see they would have died if that was Battlefield or Final Destination. Or basically any other stage besides, like, the big ones, like Paltina's Temple. But, yeah. Um, so, this is one of, this is his best um, critical hit, definitely. And this is going to have to take, well not have to take, this is going to take number eight. Right. This does go against my rule about, um, about attacks being too hard to land. But, I mean, his side special is just too, too iconic. So this is Game & Watch with his number nine. Yes, it's very hard to land. But when you do land it, it's really amazing. Um, and this is just too iconic for me to put it any lower than this. So this, for being as iconic as it is, this is going to take number seven. And number six, we have Jigglypuff's Rest. This is a bit easier to land, especially if you use up special first to put them to sleep and then follow up with rest. Um, this isn't too easy to land, I guess. That is the only problem. You do have to get, like, you have to time it really well. And you're left very vulnerable if you miss. And I apparently cannot land it. But I don't even know, like, what the timing is to land this. Yeah, so this is hard to land. Um, but, 
It's just too iconic. It does so like a ton of damage. It just looks really good in general. Okay, I can't land it, but yeah, this is gonna. Most of you probably already know what this looks like, because I cannot land this. Um, but this is going to take number six. Yeah, one more of it. No. One more, and then I'm gonna just end it. Okay. Next, we have Ridley's Down Special Skewer, which is really, it looks really good, um, especially with it like basically just going through them. It's pretty easy to land, actually. The range is, I know you like can't be too close or it just does damage and not a lot of it. But, I mean, this is pretty easy to land, and it basically does, like, 50 damage. You, I think you can theoretically land it in midair. It's hard, it's hard to do. Um, but I think you can actually land it in midair. Let me try to grab him. The problem is falling speed is slightly different, I think between um, you like normal and you in free fall. I, yeah, well there it was. Okay, so I think you can like, I don't know if it actually crits, but I think you can land the move in midair. I didn't want to kill him. Um, so this is going to take number five. Yeah, so you can land it in midair too, which makes it even easier to land. So this is going to take number five. Next, so we have another iconic one, which is Luigi's Uppercut. I talked slightly about this earlier, but it does good damage, 30 damage. This is really hard to land. Um, it can't be done in midair. That's the only problem. You have to do it on the ground. They can be in midair, though. That's the good part. Um... The only, sorry about, sorry about the background noise, um, the only other thing with this, what was I looking at? I'm in, oh, right, frame by frame. Yeah, um, thing with this, you have, it only hits, like, for this first move right here. Once that finishes, the rest of it won't actually, um, do anything so if, if they're like higher if they're too high then it won't actually critical hit them it'll just hit them it's really hard to hit in general too even if they are above you um but if this is really good really iconic so it's going to have to take um number All right, next up, we have the D Donkey Kong Punch. I forget what it's called, like Jungle Punch, it maybe. No, I think don't. I think Jungle goes like Jungle Rush is Final Smash. I don't know. Um, yeah, this is also really iconic. Good damage, easy to hit. You can like you can stop the charging really quickly by shielding and then continue charging later, and it saves from where you left off. You can use it in midair, I missed, but you can use it in midair if you need to. Um, and yeah, this is an iconic move, good move, and this is real, since it's really pretty good actually, it's going to take number three you all knew this would come up but in number two we have falcon punch and i really don't need to explain this this is the most iconic critical hit in the game like 
This is probably the most iconic move in the game. Like, I think this is, like, this move itself has been in, like, Henry Stickman. And I think it's been, like, referenced in some other stuff. So. Uh, yeah, this is easily number two. Alright, and in number one, this isn't technically a critical hit, but it should be. It's the down taunt. Especially if, this, if it spikes. If I do control so they don't actually, like, fall off. That, that, that should definitely be a critical hit. If this was a critical hit, this should be number one. But it's not, and it should be, and um, D Nintendo, please make this a critical hit, because this is, this is probably, like, Falcon Punch was the most iconic move, this is the most iconic taunt. Like, make this an actual critical hit. I don't think any taunts are actually critical hits, so this, I mean, this is like the OG um, damage taunt. And it doesn't even have anything special. Now Kazuya has one, Greninja has one, a lot of characters have one that I don't remember at the moment. But make make this a crit. It, it fits like everything that a crit should have. It does good knockback, with, but doesn't do much damage. So it's basically like Cloud's down special. It's extremely hard to hit. Just make this a crit, please. But technically, this isn't a critical hit, so I guess technically Falcon Punch wins. So, good for you, Falcon Punch. Anyway, thanks for watching. I recently, finally, got every spirit in the game in Super Smash Bros. Which took forever. I mean, I've had this game since, like, 2020. So that took forever. Um, but I finally got it all. So this is kind of a special video to celebrate that. And so if you liked this video, please drop a like down below, um, comment any ideas you have for me to make, subscribe if you want to. I post video game content, basically nothing but video game content, um, at 100, no, at 1,000 subscribers, I will get a capture card at, um, yeah, and then at, 300, at 500 subscribers, I will reveal the spirit team that I use to basically beat, like, every, that I use to basically beat, um, like, the, to, I will showcase the spirits that I use to beat, um, basically, like, every spirit in the game. And before I go, as I as you might know, some characters have gimmicks, like Kirby has his inhale, and it has like a whole, in the ability section, it has like a whole nother part um, to it. So, what I'm thinking, and tell me if you like this in the comments, but I'm thinking of ranking all of these gimmicks that no one has except DLCs. Let me move to DLCs. All, like, here. Here, like Joker has his um, the gorge for Arsene. Hero has MP and command sections in the down special. Terry has um, his um, command inputs and special moves. Min Min has um, the different like ways to attack in the different arms. Steve has Minecraft Queen Block. Seth Ross has his wings. Pyro has Flare Smash, Rift Rift Foresight, Kazuya's Rage Dive, comm and Command Inputs, and Sora's three different neutral specials and combos. So I'm thinking of ranking all of these, and obviously there's more, these were just the DLCs. Um, so tell me if you like that, and I will see you next time.